We thank each and every one of you, first of all, individually and all of you together collectively, for allowing the co-creation of this transmission from our reality to yours, from your reality to ours, and in that process, thus then, the creation, the co-creation of a third vibration, a third frequency, a third reality, a new reality in which we can interact together more and more in every way, every day. So we thank you for the gift you are giving to us and our civilization in allowing us to experience all of you in this manner. We would like to begin the following transmission in the following way. We have titled this transmission, 15 Minutes and Counting. We will explain why we chose that title in, oh, about 15 minutes. <laughs> First and foremost, let us say that the whole idea of this transmission, this night of your time, as you know time to exist, is that this is part one of the transmission, and tomorrow of your time is part two and part three. Thus taking these three transmissions, in a sense, as a whole transmission, which in my time and from my dimension and my frame of reference will simply be delivered all at once, with no break. It will simply find its way into your dimension and your time frame when and where it is appropriately timed for the transmission to be received, when the receiver is ready. Time and space in that sense are very flexible, very malleable, as many more of you are now finding out, even in your own reality. Time and space in your reality, as you move forward in your exploration of consciousness and spirituality, are becoming more malleable, more flexible, more plastic, more slippery. Many of you are beginning to realize <clears throat> that you are having different kinds of experiences of space and time now. More synchronicity coming into your lives as you begin to expand your understanding of consciousness. As you begin to live more in the moment. <clears throat> as you begin to realize and manifest the idea of your dream, your passion, your joy, your excitement. This is part and parcel of this whole so-called new age of awareness on your planet which we are more than happy to assist you in co-creating. The idea of this transmission specifically, as has been explained to you to some degree already, is to create an understanding of how you create your physical reality, how you have created your physical reality, how you can create your physical reality to be more in alignment, more harmonious, more synchronous with what you prefer it to be and that this has a lot to do specifically with the receiver in your body, which is what you call your brain. As we have said previously in another transmission, there are three stages to the idea of the downloading of informational reality and the experience of reality when it comes to the connection and the relationship between non-physical and physical reality. The higher mind, the higher self, that component of who you are as a person, the non-physical side of your consciousness, as is specifically designed to interact with the physical side of your personality and your consciousness, that downloads energy, information, concepts. That higher mind, in that sense, is the conceiver. And thus then, in delivering that information, through the brain, which is the receiver, the antenna, the wiring of the brain then configures that download of information in a manner that is appropriate based on the belief systems in the personality for the personality to interpret, to receive, and to perceive in physical reality, as physical reality. In other words, the concepts coming from the higher mind are translated through the antenna of the brain into concepts that are then perceived by the physical mind, the physical personality, as your physical reality experience. So if there is something about your physical reality experience that you wish to change, the idea is to understand that it is part and parcel of the way you are receiving the information, the way your brain is interpreting the informational downloads from your higher mind that determines through the belief systems that have wired your brain into a certain configuration exactly how the physical mind is actually capable of perceiving your physical reality experience. Because physical reality is really not solid. 
it is really only the experience of it that is real, but not the physical reality itself. Physical reality, as you have heard for thousands of years, is just an illusion. But the experience of it is real. And the experience of physical reality is determined by the belief systems and definitions that are hardwired into your brain, into your receiver, into your antenna, and thus then determines exactly how you interpret and how you receive the conceptual downloads coming from the higher mind. So, allowing the brain to be wired in a manner that allows for clear communication, clear connection between physical mind and higher mind is of paramount importance in order to know that you are receiving and interpreting the downloads from higher mind in a manner that is aligned with the idea of intention of higher mind and in a manner that will allow you then to experience physical reality in a manner that is also aligned with that higher vibration, that higher frequency. So this transmission tonight and tomorrow of your time is designed specifically to help rewire the brain <clears throat> in a manner that makes it more superconductive, more hyperconductive, more receptive of the original, initial, intentional, vibrational frequency of the download from the higher mind, so that it can be interpreted and perceived and experienced by the physical mind in a way that is more in alignment with the higher mind's desire, the higher mind's intention. Because the higher mind's intention is always, 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 always to guide the physical experience in a manner that will allow the physical personality to best realize itself, to best express itself in the most fundamental way, in the most natural way, in the way that is most highly aligned with the highest vibration in creation, which you translate as love, passion, joy, excitement. So when you act on those things in your life, the things that contain the highest amount of joy, passion, excitement, you are thus then most aligned with your true natural core being. However, we understand that many times in physical reality, especially on your planet, you are raised to believe things, certain definitions, certain belief systems about physical reality that do not necessarily allow you the ability, the willingness, the awareness to act on those vibrations and those frequencies coming from your higher mind that are most aligned with your natural true core excitement, joy, passion, and love. So learning how to allow your brain to rewire itself, learning how to transform those definitions and those beliefs through many different directions is one way to allow you to become a better receiver, a clearer receiver, of the information from higher mind and allow you to experience a physical reality that is more in accord uh, with that idea of your natural, true, core, excitement, joy, passion, and love. So that is why we will talk about some of the specific mechanisms of the brain tonight, and tomorrow we will deal specifically with the idea of the structure the nature of the structure of belief systems. We have done a lot of talking about the nature of beliefs and different beliefs, how you can transform them, the many different ways that there are. For all techniques and all tools are simply permission slips. Different rituals are simply permission slips. They give you permission, in a sense. They give yourself permission, in a sense, to be more of who you are. Because the permission slips you are attracted to, the tools, techniques, and rituals you are attracted to, are simply attractive to you because they are most aligned with the belief system within you. So they reveal to you, in a sense, a reason. They seem like a reason, an ability. They give you a sense of permission to grant yourself the ability to be more of who you are. But tomorrow we will talk very specifically about the nature of the actual structure of beliefs, especially the idea of the negative ones that you many times seem to have a great deal of difficulty changing in your life. We will literally, in a sense, examine them as if we were using a very powerful x-ray beam to reveal the structure, the skeletal structure of a belief so that you can then thus by that revelation, by looking at the x-ray, by looking at the structure, begin to understand how beliefs reinforce themselves and by being able to see how they do so, beginning to be able to sense where and when you have the ability to empower yourself to change that structure, to use that structure to your positive advantage, and to change and transform those beliefs in positive ways, to start allowing them to work for you, in a sense, instead of against you. 
We will do that in depth tomorrow of your time. And then, as has been explained, we will utilize the technology of the holotope experience to take what we are talking about tonight of your time and tomorrow morning of your time and synthesize and fuse it together in an experience that will then, with the knowledge we are sharing tonight and tomorrow, help you in that moment, in those 15 minutes within that holotope experience, really truly learn to allow your brain to rewire itself to become highly conducive, highly conductive to the receiving of the energy in a manner that will make it easier for you to examine any beliefs that may seem to be standing in your way and use that x-ray vision to see what the structure of that belief is and change it on your own so that each and every one of you at the end of this three-part transmission will be capable of walking away into your lives, into your reality with a very powerful permission slip tool that you can apply to any belief system that you wish to change very quickly, very rapidly, very immediately and get the effect that is more in alignment with your true, natural, core, passionate, loving selves. Does that make sense to you? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Now, before we continue with the specifics of 15 minutes and counting, we would also like to bring up another aspect of your collective consciousness and throw that into the mix, as you say, in your language. <clears throat> we have, in previous transmissions, <clears throat> talked about the idea of the different ways that you often have as a species to represent certain collective consciousness ideas, certain representations of where your collective consciousness is going, or what it is considering, or what kind of reality it is pondering. Many times, especially in your particular culture, the one we are addressing right now, many times this is done through what you call popular media, popular entertainment. In other words, you create shows that are representative of certain aspects of the collective consciousness desire to change your reality in certain ways, or to examine or explore ideas that the collective consciousness may be dealing with at any given time in its overall transformational agenda. We have mentioned in previous transmissions that one very powerful representation that you created a long time ago, so to speak, in your society that represented certain ideas you were dealing with at the time as a society was the program that you call Star Trek. The idea is that it is representative of many different ideas that are what kind of a reality you prefer, what kind of things you are exploring within yourself, what kind of things you are examining about your beliefs and how you wish to apply yourselves in your reality. Now, of course, in the acceleration of this age of exploration of consciousness, you have recently also begun to accelerate your examination and your exploration of the idea of the threshold crossing you all call 2012. And this has now been represented in a manner of speaking by the idea of the creation of one of your movies. Now, <clears throat> understand that many individuals will look at the representation that has been presented in that movie as a very fear-based idea. Everything is being destroyed. The entire planet is coming apart at the seams. Very few people will survive. It is the end of the world as we know it. All right. Not really. <laughs> I guarantee you will wake up on December 22nd, 2012. <laughs> there will still be a planet. It will still be a relatively nice day. <laughs> However, look at the great service you have given yourself. Because the idea is that by getting all of the fear-based examples, all of the fear-based representations out in a movie, on the screen over there, you don't have to experience it in your physical reality anymore. That's one way to understand how you do these things. This is how you give yourself an opportunity to face the issues, face the fears, by reflecting it back to yourself from what you call your silver screen. 
so that you can examine what you really believe, what you really feel about these ideas, and ask yourself whether or not you really prefer that kind of interpretation of the energy, or whether you really prefer another reality. So this is, in a sense, a way that you have of creating a catharsis for yourselves, of examining these beliefs very deeply, and doing it in a manner that actually allows you to experience it in a sort of a roller coaster fun park kind of way. So that it's all right to examine the fear, but you're doing it in a setting where you're with a lot of people, you're having the experience together, you're supporting each other in that experience, and you're having a good time doing it so that it's not quite so scary to examine it. Thus then you give yourself the ability to recognize that by having it out on the screen, you can see that you've gotten it out of your system. And thus then you give yourself the opportunity to choose, to clear the deck, clear the slate, start from scratch, square one, all these lovely phrases that you have in your language, and begin again with a new idea of what you would like your world to be. Now yes, your December 21st, your winter solstice in 2012 is definitely a demarcation line. It is a demarcation line, a threshold crossing for the idea, as we perceive it anyway, of the collective consciousness going from a world where the collective energy is more negative than positive to a world where the collective energy is slightly more positive, finally, than negative. So you are tipping the scale. <clears throat> you are crossing a line. You are crossing a threshold. And from that point forward, now that, after that date, the collective consciousness of your planet will be slightly more positive than negative for the first time in many thousands of years, that means it can snowball, it can accelerate, it can pick up speed. You can build on that positive energy. And thus then you can eventually create <clears throat> your reality to be what you prefer it to be. As we have said, it is also the end of what has been euphemistically called the quarantine of your planet. The idea not again being that on December 22nd all our spaceships will land, but the idea being that after that date they could, because we are no longer holding ourselves back because of our own laws, but we are simply from that date forward taking the cue from all of you as to when you collectively say you are ready for open contact with other civilizations. So the quarantine goes away on that date as well. It will still be up to you to exercise your full responsibility, your full creativity, your full ability to create the reality that you prefer to change the vibrational frequency of your reality to make it more conducive for positive experience, for the idea of creative experience, for the idea of open contact with other civilizations, to build and build and build upon that, to create the new systems that you wish to have on your planet that will then be put in place to replace the old systems when they fall away, when they crumble. The idea thus again remember being that you're not actually changing your world, you're changing yourselves. And in changing the vibrational frequency of yourselves, you are shifting yourselves to a parallel reality, Earth, that is already representative of the vibration you wish to see reflected back to you in your illusion of physical reality. So remember, you change nothing, you change no one but yourself. But when you change yourself, you actually shift yourself to an already existing parallel Earth that is already more representative of the vibration you have changed yourself to. The other Earth that was there a moment ago, that you were in a moment ago, is still there, but it's no longer experienced by you. It's no longer visible to you. But the people that choose to remain in that vibration will still experience whatever that vibration has to offer but you will have moved on to another vibrational earth reality and again and again and again and again as you constantly shift your energy you will constantly shift through multiple parallel earth realities that are more and more and more and more representative of the vibration of your true natural self if that's the direction of course that you choose don't let us force you <laughs> if you wish to remain in a misery reality by all means please do so that's your choice we would strongly suggest that you choose to be more of your natural selves and so experience the shift to more positive and more positive and more expansive and more collectively conscious vibrational parallel earth realities. But, well, that's just us. Now, 15 minutes and counting. The reason that this is titled 15 minutes is because, as was explained, we are going to talk about the idea of the plasticity of the brain. 
Every single thought you have, every single feeling you have, every single belief you have actually changes the wiring, the literal neurological wiring of the brain. Literally changes the pathways. Literally. Even your own scientists now understand this. The idea being thus then that when the pathway is changed, it represents a new frequency, a new idea, a new belief. It represents what has been imposed upon it. So that from that point forward, when it goes through its plastic state, and in a sense becomes hardwired again temporarily, the hardwiring it settles into will represent a pathway that is more representative of the vibration that you have changed it into, that has been responsible for changing that neurological pathway, and thus, in a sense, creating an easier path, a quicker path, a more superconductive path for whatever vibration was changing that neurological pathway, be it positive or negative. So it reinforces itself. The idea being that it takes approximately in your terms of time, 15 minutes from the moment that the thought, the belief, the feeling begins to plasticize the neurological pathway till the moment that that neurological pathway becomes hardwired again, it takes about 15 minutes to go through that complete process. Therefore, in doing what we are doing in this transmission, and in examining beliefs tomorrow, and then in doing the 15-minute holotope experience, what we will be taking advantage of is that 15-minute solidification time span, so that when we start introducing new ideas, new beliefs, new perspectives, that you will then, according to your own desire and your own timing, begin to take into your brain, begin to rewire your neurological paths with those new ideas, Going through the holotope experience will give you the ability to ensure that the rewiring will go in the most positive direction possible, will imbue the most positive frequency possible so that by the time it becomes hardwired, you are at least giving yourself the opportunity for more opportunity to experience more synchronicity, more hardwiring of the neurological pathways of your brain that is more in alignment with the positive vibration you say you prefer regarding the reality you wish to experience. <clears throat> So it is as if we are doing this to create an ability for more plasticity to make the changes more frequent according to your desires, more capable of making those changes in your neurological pathways, and then giving you a permission slip that allows you to experience the actual process <clears throat> of rebuilding that pathway through its entire 15 minute cycle and in doing so in that way building it into a pathway that is much more hyper conductive and hyper conducive to hardwiring itself in a manner that will allow your pathways to be more aligned more receptive to the downloads of the higher mind and thus give you as a physical personality more alignment in your experience of physical reality does this make sense yes. <laughs> all right so Basically speaking, this transmission parts one, two, and three essentially are, well, brain surgery. <laughs> <clears throat> no real anesthetic required, <clears throat> except the idea of you falling into that neutral state of allowance, acceptance, self-love that will allow you the greatest degree of freedom to allow these changes to occur in the most positive direction possible. Yes, we recognize here and there a little negative belief, a little fear may creep in, but that's all right. We will deal with them as they come up because that's what tomorrow morning is for. In examining the actual x-ray structure of beliefs, you will have a very potent permission slip tool to be able to recognize the beliefs for what they are, see them in the full exposed light of their true structure, their true nature, and how it is they actually are capable of reinforcing themselves when you don't prefer them to. We will teach you all the little tricks that beliefs use, in a sense, to reinforce themselves. You see, 
beliefs in general, in order for you to have a physical reality experience at all, must by definition have a mechanism built into them that reinforces the belief as real. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a physical reality experience if it didn't do that. But the idea is that when you create, through definitions, a negative belief, the negative belief will also use the same mechanism of self-reinforcement, but it will add an entire array of tricks and tools to constantly reinforce itself, to constantly make it seem as if no other belief is possible, no other belief is true. And it is this array of secondary level tricks, secondary level belief system definitions that allow the idea of negative beliefs to seem like such brick walls, so impenetrable, so unchangeable, so difficult to dissolve. But we'll explore them, we'll expose them, bring them into the light of your consciousness and show you very clearly what the tricks are so that you will not be fooled by them again. Is it a deal? Yes. <laughs> All right. Let us thus then begin, first of all, by a little bit of a pre-experience, a pre-meditation, if you will. Relax. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. <clears throat> and let it out. And relax your body, relax your mind, relax your emotions, relax your soul. Relax your expectations, relax your assumptions. Right here, at least for right now, at least for this moment, you are free from worry, free from any concern, free from fear. And if fear comes up, just invite it in. Give it a place, tell it to sit in the corner for a moment, that you'll deal with it in a moment. <clears throat> but for right now, you're giving yourself a little bit of a mini vacation. Take another deep breath, in, and let it out. <clears throat> and feel all of the day melt away. Take another deep breath in, and let it out. And just for a moment realize you have absolutely nothing in the world to be concerned about. You have right now no job to think about, no bills to pay, no worries, no deadlines. Just you. You're just here, right here, right now, just for this moment. It's all right. The world will still be there when you open your eyes. But for right now, in this space, you are in a bubble reality, another reality. <clears throat> Take another deep breath in and let it out. <clears throat> and imagine in whatever way, shape, or form works for your imagination, imagine your brain and see all the little neurological pathways. You can see them in any way, shape, or form you wish. You may see them as wiring. You may see them as fluid. You may see them as crystals. You may see them as a drawing. You may see them as a pattern of any kind of configuration whatsoever. But just know that that is representative of the idea of the pathways of your brain. And the pathways, like a computer program, in a sense, are representative of different ideas, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, definitions. This is, in a sense, a basic representation of the personality mask, the artificial personality construct that you use to explore the experience of physical reality. It is not really fundamentally who you are as a being, as a consciousness. It is a filtering system just in the same way that if you go diving in the sea, you bring along a mask or a snorkel or a diving tank, the idea of the neurological pathways of the brain, the antenna that receives the downloads from a higher mind, from non-physical reality, that creates the template 
of your physical experience is simply such an artificial device to allow you to dive down into the experience vibrationally of physical reality and explore around for a while. So, the idea that we are going to be undertaking is to make sure that this diving mask is as clean and clear as it can be to give you an unobstructive view, as unobstructive as possible in physical reality. We're going to rewire to make sure that your breathing passage to the tube, snorkel, or tanks is clear, that your oxygen mixture is appropriate, that you won't get the bends. You will allow yourself <clears throat> to work with this template, however it presents itself to you. Sometimes it might even look like a map. Sometimes it might look like an abstract painting. It doesn't matter how it presents itself to you. Whatever way your imagination decides is correct, and even if it keeps changing, that's correct too. Because your imagination is key to your frequency, and whatever way it presents it is the correct way for you. So please don't judge it. Just let it be. Just play with it, just work with it, just make it your own. Just identify right now, whatever way or ways that that imagination presents to you the symbolic representation of the neurological pathways of your brain and just look at that. Just sense it, just feel it, just turn it around. Hold it in your hand, turn it upside down, inside out. If it is two dimensional, fine. If it is three dimensional, fine. If it is multidimensional, fine. Just look at it, just examine it, just realize this is your antenna. <clears throat> you will be working with this in new ways. Just for the fun of it, right now, in your imagination, <clears throat> take one neurological path, however it represents itself to you, Reconnect it somewhere else. Now reconnect the same one somewhere else. And again, somewhere else. As you do this, be very, very quiet within yourself and just get a sensation of how that feels every time you do it. Just probe around. See what happens when you connect the neurological path here. Now see how it feels when you connect it there. See what happens. See if you have any other kinds of sensory experiences or feelings that come up or ideas or inspirations that suddenly come to you <clears throat> or images that present themselves unexpectedly or memories that may come back in a sense. Just play around with that one circuit and just keep connecting it to different other nodal points, other places that you can connect it to. Keep redrawing it. And each time you do it, whatever pace is appropriate for you. You don't have to do it fast. You don't have to follow exactly the way we are saying it. But as you do it, just start to pay attention to the differences you experience when you do that. <clears throat> and if you seem to experience no difference at the moment, let that be all right as well. There is no wrong way to do this right now. But I guarantee you, even by doing this, you are doing something. You are starting the ball rolling. <clears throat> you are starting to unravel that ball of twine. And just by doing this right now, this little tiny exercise right now, you are going to make it easier for you to unlock from what you prefer to unlock from and lock into what you prefer to lock into. <clears throat> but at the same time, you will retain a malleability, a flexibility, a plasticity unprecedented in your reality. You will know that you always have the ability, one way or the other, to rewire your neurological path to be more receptive as an antenna to the downloads from the higher mind. <clears throat> that you have the ability to redraw the blueprint, to reorganize the template that you use upon which to build your physical reality experience. Take a deep breath in and let it out. <clears throat> and just connect that little pathway now to one last place. Find a place that feels comfortable, good, cozy, 
peaceful, warm, cool, loving, pretty, tasty, whatever to you feels correct. And just leave it there for the moment. Breathe in one more time. <clears throat> and as you breathe out, let that neurological pathway begin to crystallize. Let it begin to hardwire into that wondrous place of perfect peace, harmony, joy, and love. Just that one little thread, that one little path, that one little string, that one little line, that one little wire will now begin to make all the difference in the world because as you reconnect it to that new place, it will now send new signals through that nodal point to other wires, which will allow them to begin to also restructure themselves at whatever pace is comfortable for you. So that you know that just by having done this one thing tonight, as we progress in this communication, Slowly and silently beneath your skull, your brain will be changing in ways, rewiring itself in ways that will already become more conducive to self-revelation, self-awareness, self-love, self-validation. So just let that sink in. Take another deep breath. And hold it, hold it, hold it, and blow it out. <clears throat> Open your eyes. And just be aware that going on right now in your brain is the subtle yet profound process of rewiring as we continue this transmission.